I'm Meredith with Extreme Terrain and welcome to this installment of Customer Builds. Now this is a series where we showcase different rigs from our customer build pages right here on our site to hopefully give you some ideas or even some inspiration for your ride at home. Now in this episode, we're gonna be catching up with John from Massachusetts about his very functional 2012 JK and on his Restoration 01 TJ. Now if you wanna see more about John's builds, including a full breakdown of his mods list, you can check out his page on the site. And for those of you watching here on YouTube, you can click the link down below below. So what do you say we connect with John and check out his builds? Hey John, thank you for joining me on this Zoom call today. I'm really excited to talk about your Jeeps. What? Nice to meet you in person, sort of, and uh, great, great to be <laughs> <Sort> here. <of. laughs> awesome, awesome. So I understand that you do have two Jeeps. You have a JK as well as a TJ. I mean, I wanted to dive into the JK a little bit more just because I know you have a bulk of the parts there. What do you have going on as far as your suspension and your wheel and tire is concerned? Well, it's the factory wheel and tires. I actually wanted to run those for quite a while. It's my first JK that I've run off-road again. I know nothing beats the capability of a road run. And I, I really didn't want to turn it into a giant tank and take it out there where it could run over everything. I wanted to see the stock capabilities of it. And so underneath, I put a TerraFlex leveling kit in, because first of all, I don't like the rake. Second of all, I put a ton of skid plates and you know, the rack and the tent and everything on there. And honestly, I wanted to account for some of the weight that I did put on it. Of course, I got the Mammoth track bar too, which I wanted to put in for the adjustability. I've already done the exhaust spacer kit. I didn't really need it for the spacer lift that I have in there, but I, I put it in there beforehand anyways, because I figured it'd just be easier to get to before I had all the skid plates on and everything like that. And I, I knew I would I knew I would eventually need it, you know? So as far as the ride is concerned, it's, um, it's largely a stock ride. It's fully armored underneath, but I, I I really wanted to wheel it like that for a while just to see the full capabilities of the Rubicon. I mean, it can get through like anything. And of course, compared to a non-Wrangler, which is what I was wheeling before, it's just night and day as it just goes over everything. And that's, <laughs> you know, with dark wheels and tires. So it's an impressive vehicle to begin with. And I mean, the Rubicon obviously has a little bit more to it. You mentioned that you also have a decent amount of armor uh, that you put on it that the suspension is kind of compensating for. So can you tell me a little bit more about your armor setup? Yeah, I armored just about everything I could possibly find to armor because number one thing is don't break anything when you're out there, I suppose. Uh, yeah. So I've got a, I have an Ace Engineering um, engine transmission and transfer case slate, which is a great combo because one slides right off right onto the other. Um, the little protectors on there so you can't the heads off any of your bolts or anything. And that feeds right perfectly into the Rugged Ridge uh, gas tank skin plate. So like all of these pieces have slide right from one to the other. So if I'm going over something because I have to, uh, I mean, there's nothing that I get hung up on there or anything. I also put a EVAP canister skid plate up there as well. Poison Spider bombshell uh, differential cover on front and I've got a rugged ridge slider for the rear differential. I actually wanted the slider on the back because it's the only thing I've ever found that will actually protect the mechanism where the drive shaft meets the axle there. I've even got little skid plates that are on like the front lower control arms meet where they meet the front axle there because those hang down low. And so all of the low points that I could possibly hit I have pretty well covered and um, it's a necessity I suppose if you're if you're actually going to go on some harder things you have to drive on your skid plates. Um, so I, you know, I didn't want to, just didn't want to damage anything. Now I do particularly like the front bumper setup. Um, I see you have a couple of things going on as far as the front mounting points are concerned. Can you tell me a little bit more about your thought process behind that? Well, first of all, I love that bumper. It's nearly full width, but not quite, but it comes up a little bit on the sides. So I don't really lose any um, approach angle, you know, in front of my tires because of that. Just the way the skid plate underneath there mounted to the bumper itself, I thought, well, I thought it looked great, but it's it's just really, really good protection for the Rubicon sway, electronic sway bar disconnected. And the lights that are built right into it, I, I love lights, so that, that was pretty cool. The, the bull bar on that thing actually came with more mounting points than I thought it was going to. It actually has tabs on the top and then it comes down and there's tabs underneath as well. So I mounted the light bar under the bar so that I could actually put my high lift jack on top of the bar. Got a couple of brackets there just to keep that up top. And, um, you know, then of course the winch on there as well. But it's, uh, 
it, it's a really neat looking setup, I think. And like everything, I, I bought it for functionality first and look second, you know? Yeah. So it gives, it gives me all the protection that I was looking for and, uh, you know, some pretty cool features. And it looks seamless and it also is very different. You always see jacks either mounted in the back of the Jeep or you have those common places on the hood, which are great mounting locations, but I really like the way that you place that. It's great for visibility and it's also great for accessibility. If you ever need that thing, it's right on the front, very easy to grab. I saw that you have obviously the ruby rails from the factory, but you've added on to that. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, the barricade rock pliers I bought for a couple of reasons. First of all, I got to keep the ruby rail. And I really like the ruby rail on there because it covers that pinch seam, which I don't think looks great on Jeep. But also, I went, planned on using it at least as a small step um, because, you know, I, I'm tall enough that I can actually fit on the seat um, for now. And when I put a bigger lift in, that probably won't be the case. But, you know, my passengers usually get in by stepping on that step, grabbing the grab bar on the inside and pulling themselves in. And, um, you know, I didn't want to, like, pick on the side of the Jeep. Those sliders have been awesome there. I bought them for strength, really. They're super strong. But I've even used those, you know, if you're in a real tight spot, I've just parked it up against the side of the rock, turned the wheel and let them shimmy me around the rock, you know? So I've even pushed them in sideways and they, they just don't budge. They've been, they've been great. Some people think like, oh yeah, we're protecting the pinch weld with a rock slider, but they're actually used to slide off of rocks. That's why they, they're given that name. and. Again, with the skid plates and the rock sliders, I think that that's a perfect combo. Um, and I really like the way that it looks mounted up with the Ruby rail. And again, guys, if you do want to check out John's bill page, you can find it right here on the site. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can click the link down below. Now, moving up, obviously you have that big tent and the, uh, the roof rack on there. Can you tell me more about that? Do you use the tent often and overland a lot and camp a lot? I do camp a lot. I saw that and I was like, oh, I have to have that just because it was like the coolest tree fort ever. I've never yeah, seen no, anything like that. It is. <laughs> but it is great. That tent, it, it's so well thought out. Um, it's got little pockets and hooks and Velcro for everything. It's got lighting on the inside. I mean, all the windows open up. You stay perfectly dry in it. Yeah, I got it down to where it's about 10 minutes to set it up and 10 minutes to fold it up. And that includes putting the cover on it and everything. And it's, um, it's just really quick and uh, easy to use. And they're up above the puddles, above the animals, anything else that crawls around on the ground. And I've stayed dry in that thing and just pouring rainstorm. So I, I love that tent. And the rack that I got, that's a KMS Congo Safari, I believe. That is a great setup. And I'm happy to hear that you're using it a lot. Um, and it's not just there for show. <laughs> oh, I've always been a camper, so. This is just an upgrade in my equipment. <laughs> moving away from the, the roof rack and the tent and moving kind of towards the back, can you tell me a little bit more about um, your armor and any exterior accessories that you have on the back? Uh, the DB8 bumper back there, again, I wanted full protection, that's wrap around. The reason I picked that bumper, because this one actually cuts underneath on the underside, so it just helps out with that departure a, a little bit. And I and I have I have come off ledge and dropped that bumper on the ledge a few times too, and um, it it can take it. It's a real solid bumper. And again, lights in the bumper, you can't argue with that. Lights in the back bumper, they're great for not only just backing up and seeing on like dark trails at night. They're also really good for work lights. Absolutely. And I know you have a, a lot going on on the outside. Um, do you have anything going on the inside? Well, first of all, same theory as the outside. Uh, I'm all into the I'm all into the armor and stuff. So the, I think the very first thing I did was bought seat covers for. Them. So I got the neoprene seat covers. I think they look pretty good. So it's like gray and black and stuff. I put them on the back seat and the front seat. Like the outside, I wanted to protect it from everything. So I put in barricade floor mats, like those little Smitty built seat covers. Uh, honestly, the console, the little console thing there, which mm -hmm. I love, that wasn't really to protect the console so much as it was to protect me because I find when I have the roof down, the sun beats down on that thing, I keep burning my forearm oh, on the console. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. So having something cloth, that's that's actually a perfect idea, having that there. Yeah. I also, like I mentioned, have the grab bars on there, just mostly so passengers can get in. And I have that A-pillar light switch set up in there, which I love too, and I put all the off-road lights on that. The light bar that's on the front, I have the side lights that are on the front bumper. I love those lights, by the way, those side flood ones there, because yeah. like, if you're on a trail at night, those things point out to the sides enough 
so that you can actually see where you're going to turn into before you turn there. So I, I love those lights, but that takes a switch position. The rear ones take another switch position. And I have one left over that I haven't decided. Oh, what no. It looks like you're going to have to <laughs> add something. That third one down just needs something to do. As far as recovery is concerned, I know that you're you're going out a lot on the trail, obviously the way that your Jeep's built, but do you have any recovery that you keep with you as far as tools or um, straps? Well, I have the barricade recovery kit that I got from you guys. It has a great starter set, but I, I mean, it's got the chain in there, which I don't use for vehicle recovery, but I love wrapping that thing around trees if I have to use the snatch block and get it off to the side or something like that. And, you, um, it, you know, came with the tree saver, and um, the snatch block itself and um, yeah, some other strap. I keep a lot of things in there. I also keep a come along in case I have to, you know, annually get myself out back because you can't do that with the winch on the front very easily. Yeah. And I keep a full set of tools, like pretty much everything I've ever used to put the Jeep together, just because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you never know and you want to be prepared. You're out in the middle of nowhere, something breaks or something happens, you need to you need to make sure that you have some stuff with you. So th that kind of wraps it up as far as the JK is concerned. But again, I understand you have this TJ as well. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about like what you use that for? That one is not an off-roading vehicle. That's actually, that's my Jenny's TJ. She bought it brand new in 2001. Absolutely wow. loves the thing. And uh, you know, it's got that four liter motor in it that's gonna run forever. And, oh yeah, uh, they're bullets. And, and I love it too, just because I love all Jeeps. I think it's, we have two different models too, you know? Um, but you know, it was starting to show its age. It's almost 20 years old. So um, I got rid of all the rust and everything, did all the body work, put all the shiny pieces on there. So. You know, we get the door hinges, the, the mirrors, the tailgate hinges, and, uh, you know, get the hood dress up kit on there too. So it did, did all that. It's starting to look pretty good. Is that a new top that you put on there, or is that the original top? That is a new top. As a, I mean, the, the old one lasted probably 16 years or something oh, like wow. that. Wow. And even though there's only a couple parts here and there, I think it looks great. Oh, yeah. She's taking very good care of it. And, now it's time for some upgrades. Well, we get the step rails on the side too, those nice chrome step rails. That was actually, that was actually the first thing to go on there because uh, the, her stairs were actually great. Are you looking to do any more uh, to either of the vehicles or either of the, the Jeeps? Are there any future plans? I mean, I think we're going to put some more looks things on the TJs. So I, I know there's some uh, real inserts that she's been thinking of and stuff also, also with a little bling on them and um, the JK. I, I am going to put a, um, a three inch lift on there and 35 inch tires. Really that three inch lift I decided based on the fact that I wanted 35 inch tires just to bring my uh, axles up off the ground a little bit and that's how much flex I'm going to have. Uh, and that's that's the lift I need just to clear for the flex. I don't want any, any higher than I need to do just that. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. I, what a pleasure to talk to you about you, your Jeep, uh, as well as Jenny's Jeep. And great have a great to rest of your day. You too. So that's gonna do it for this installment of Customer Builds. Make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content, product videos, and install videos. And always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.